The first one is the following. Let's convert 27.80 liters, and we're gonna convert that into cubic centimeters. So as always, what we do is we write down what we know, what we're given, 27.80, and that's liters. And then what's our plan? Uh, well, we know that we can go from liters to milliliters because we know in our mind the metric conversion between liters and milliliters. And we also remember, remember that thing I asked you to remember? That a, uh, a milliliter was the same thing as a cubic centimeter. So we can then go from milliliters to cubic centimeters. So that's our plan. And so what we're gonna do is say, that one uh, milliliter is equal to 10 to the minus three liters. Now you could write it the other way. You could say that 1000 milliliters is equal to one liter. That's exactly the same conversion factor. Instead of the negative exponent on the bottom, move it upstairs and make it 1000 milliliters equal to one liter. It's exactly the same thing. But we'll write it like this because when we have a liters on the bottom and the top, then uh, they cancel. And so what we have left is milliliters. Now we also remember that one milliliter is exactly the same thing as one cubic centimeter. So then we've completed everything, or we've completed the, the writing down what to do, because now all we have to do is calculate. All right, so what we're gonna do is take 27.80 times one divided by this, times one divided by one, and all that you get is 2.78 times 10 to the four cubic centimeters. All right, and we look at the significant figures, we had four significant digits in our, fir in our original number, and now we have four significant digits in our answer. So we're, that's the, that's the, uh, the level of, of uh, we wanna have the same number of significant digits because this is just multiplication and division. All right, problem part B, number two, 1,898.0, milligrams, and we're gonna convert that to kilograms. So I don't have a conversion that goes directly from milligrams to kilograms, but I do know how to go from milligrams to grams, and then from grams to kilograms. So I'll write down what I know, 1,898 decimal zero, and that's milligrams. And uh, just to show you a little bit of difference, you could say, you could write down that one uh, milligram on the bottom, you could say one milligram is equal to 10 to the minus three grams, or you can write it as 1,000 uh, milligrams exist inside of one gram. So it's either way, it's, you could write it the same way. You can say 10 to the minus three grams is equal to uh, one milligram. In other words, you could write it like this. Instead of writing it like this, I could say that 10 to the minus three grams is equal to one milligram, right? They're the same thing. Because if you take this negative exponent and move it downstairs, it blows up into 1,000, which is exactly what I have written above. All right, so whatever way you're, you're most comfortable, that's, that's fine with me. Now, we have canceled the milligrams. So we have grams, and then we could just say that 1,000 of these grams is the same thing as one kilogram. We put the unit this way so that the grams on the bottom and the top cancel. And so now we can then write the final answer. If we take 1,898.0, divide by 1,000, divide by 1,000 again, we're gonna get 1.8980 uh, times 10 to the minus three, and that's kilograms. Because that's the only unit left is kilograms. And then we check our original problem, one, two, three, four, five significant figures, one, two, three, four, five significant figures, and so I've already rounded this to the correct number of decimal places for the significant figures of our problem. 1.8980 times 10 to the minus three. All right, let's take a look at part C. Let's convert 198 decimal zero kilometers, and let's convert that to centimeters. So we write down what we have been given, 198 decimal zero, and that's kilometers. Now I don't know how to go directly from kilometers to centimeters, but that's okay. I know how to go from kilometers into meters, and then from meters into centimeters. Now I know that in one of these kilometers is 10 to the three meters or 1,000 meters. That's what a kilometer is, 1,000 meters. And so I range it this way so the kilometers cancel. If I stop here, I'll be left with meters. But I'm gonna go further. I'm going to say that one centimeter is 10 to the minus two meters or one one hundredth of a meter. That's what a centimeter is, all right? Meters cancel. And so I'm left with centimeters. So if I take the 198.0 times this 1,000, 
and then divide by this 10 to the minus 2, I'm going to get 1.980 times 10 to the 7 centimeters. And that's the final answer. I have four significant digits in my original problem statement, and I have uh, one, two, three, four significant uh, digits in my answer there as well. So that matches. All right, now the next problem is kind of weird. What I'm going to do is write down some conversions, unit, uh, units, for uh, uh, units that we don't really use very much anymore. They're, they're, you've probably heard of them, but there aren't, they aren't really units that we really use very much in modern day. But we're going to write them down and use them because, because precisely we don't use them that much, it forces us to really rely on the unit conversion methods here. So what am I talking about? We're going to write down the following conversion factors. 5.5 yards is equal to one unit called a rod. We don't really use that too much anymore. I'm also going to write down that 40 rods is the same thing as one furlong. Another unit we don't use very much anymore. And then eight furlongs is equal to one mile. And then finally, one meter is equal to 1.0936 yards. Let me double check. 5.5 yards is a rod, 40 rods is a furlong, 8 furlongs is a mile, and 1 meter is 1.0936 yards. Now why did I write all this stuff down? Because right underneath here, and for the next several problems, we're going to be forced to use only these conversion factors for the following. It says if a racetrack is 1.250 miles around, how long is it in furlongs, uh, rods, meters, and kilometers? So what we have been given is 1.250 miles. And the first part of it says convert that thing into furlongs, right? Convert to furlongs. So we just look up here and say, how do we relate, relate miles to furlongs? One mile for eight furlongs. So one mile has to go on the bottom and eight furlongs goes on the top because then the miles cancel. So it's a very simple calculation. We just multiply by eight there and divide by one. So 1.250 times 8 uh, comes out to exactly 10.00 furlongs, right? 10 furlongs. And you see how, even if you don't know what a furlong really is, you don't really have any idea what the everyday idea is for some of these things, like a rod, If you can still use the unit conversion kind of in the blind and, and get to the answer without really having intimate knowledge of what it is you're converting. So it's really powerful. All right, next. We want to go and convert this distance into rods. Now, I could start with the miles that was given, but I can also take the 10 furlongs that we figured out from the last lesson, 10.00 furlongs. Whoops. And I want to convert this to miles. Not to miles, sorry, to rods. And I have a conversion factor that one furlong is 40 rods. So it has to be like this. One furlong is 40 rods because that's the only way the furlongs will cancel. So what I'm going to have here is 10 times 40, and then I'm going to divide by 1, and so you're going to get 400.0 rods. So these are equivalent. The 1.250 miles is equivalent to this, which is also equivalent to the 400 rods. All right, now, after we convert to rods, we want to convert to meters. Actually, I think I'll just do that one down below. We'll convert it to meters. So we'll start off with the 400 rods. I guess it'd be 400.0. Sorry about that. Rods. 400.0 rods. And I want to go into meters. So I know rods, but rods get me to yards. And down here, yards gets me to meters. So I have to do a two-step conversion process. So one yard is 5.5 yards. One rod, 5.5 yards. And then once I have that, the rods cancel. And then once I have it in yards, this many yards is equal to one meter. So 1.0936 yards is one meter. And then the yards cancel like this. So you take the 400.0 times 5.5 divided by 1.0936. And when you round it, you get 2012 meters, 2012 meters. And then finally, we want to convert that to kilometers. And so we can just do that down here as well. So 2012 meters, how do we go into kilometers? We don't need those conversions up there. We know that one kilometer is the same thing as 1,000 meters. 
And we then also know that meters on the top will cancel meters on the bottom. So if you take uh, 2012 divided by 1,000, you're going to get 2.012, and that's kilometers. So 2.012 kilometers. All right, now, that was the first part of the problem. We're going to do this next part, and then we're going to be done with it. Um, this one says, when running a marathon, the race is 26.00 miles and 385.0 yards long. How far is this distance in furlongs, rods, meters, and kilometers? So we have a problem because we're told miles long, and it's also a little bit further than that, so it's miles and yards. So we have to add those two, but they're in different units. So the first thing we want to do is convert the 385 yards that we have. Let's turn that into miles, and then we'll add it to the 26 miles for the first part of the problem. So we'll take out the 385.0 yards, uh, and we want to convert that into... Um, we want to convert that into uh, miles. All right, so we can go from rods to yards to rods, and then we can go rods to furlongs, and then we can go furlongs to miles, right? So if I don't have a single conversion factor, I could just go and step through it. So 5.5 yards is one rod. So I'll say 5.5, uh, let's see here, 5.5, sorry, down, there, down here, 5.5 yards is equal to sorry about that, is equal to one rod. And why did I write it like that? Is because now I have yards canceling on the top and yards canceling on the bottom. Now I have the answer in rods. So I go over here and say, all right, then 40 rods is one furlong. 40 rods is one furlong. Again, I arrange it like this so that the rods cancel the rods. Once I have it in furlongs, I go over there to that conversion and I see that one mile is eight furlongs. All right, and then the furlongs cancel as well. So the only unit I have is miles. So I take the 385.0, divide by 5.5, divide by 40, and then divide by eight. All the ones don't really do anything. And what I'm gonna get is 0 0.2188 miles. Now that's just the the part of the problem though, because the, the marathon is 26 miles and then an additional 385 yards. So we have to add them together. So once we add those two numbers together, we're gonna see that we have 26.00 miles plus this 0 0.2188 miles. So when you add these guys together, you're gonna to get 26.22 miles. Now, when you're adding them up, significant figures basically say, I only have two digits after the decimal here, so I'm only gonna have two digits after the decimal here. Now, this number is the one I wanna convert here into the other units that we talked about in the problem statement, all right? So we wanna start with 26.22 miles. And we want to first convert that, it says, uh, into, what does it say first? Convert it into furlongs, rods, meters, and so on. So we're going to go to furlongs first. We go over here and we see that one furlong is 40 rods. Uh, actually, furlongs are miles, that's what I want. Eight furlongs, one mile. So I have one mile, I want to put it down here to cancel, and eight furlongs. Because we're converting to furlongs in this problem. So, miles cancel right here, and then when we do the multiplication, 26.22 times 8 comes out to 209.8 furlongs. All right, so that's the first part, convert to furlongs. Next, we want to convert to rods. So I'll start with this number here, the 209.8 furlong, and let's convert it into rods. When I go over here, I see that 40 rods is one furlong. So one furlong, 40 rods. Okay? And I see the cancellation happening, furlongs and furlongs. And so when I take the 209.8 and then multiply by the 40, I'm gonna get 8392 rods. 8,392 rods. Now the next part says, convert the same exact distance into meters. So it's gonna be eight 
three, nine, two rods, how do I go into meters? I go over here, rods to meters. So rods to meters. I can go from rods to yards, and then I can go from yards to meters. So it's a two-step conversion process. So I say one rod is 5.5 yards. One rod is 5.5 yards. I arrange it like this because I want the rods to cancel. And then I go back over here and say, all right, then yards to meters, 1.0936. 1.0936 yards, one meter, and the yards cancel here. So when you do this, you say, well, okay, 8392 times 5.5 divided by 1.0936 gives you 42,210 meters. So that's that in meters. And then finally, the very last part of this nightmare, 42,210 meters and it says we want to convert into kilometers. Now that one we know because we know that 1,000 meters is one kilometer. That's what a kilometer is, right? By definition, so meters cancel. And so when you grab a calculator that and divide by 1,000, the decimal moves right there. So it's gonna be 42.21 kilometers, right? 42.21 kilometers. And that is it for this lesson. So. I can't say that just solving unit conversions is just so exciting. I mean, it's kind of like you gotta crank through it. But I hope you can start to see the power of it. Because we don't really have familiarity with these unit conversions, but once I tell you that they're equal, then it's just a mechanical process of like a puzzle, putting them in the right order to cancel the things you wanna cancel, and then get the unit out that you want. Now, so far, all of these units have been a single distance converted into a new distance. And, uh, or sometimes we did volume going into a new volume, but again, that was kind of distance cubed, right? I'd like you to solve these, and when you feel comfortable, follow me on to the next lesson. We're gonna start working with compound units. How do you convert speeds, like meters per second, to a maybe kilometers per minute or something? How do you convert density? How do you do other compound units like that? Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll conquer that kind of problem in dimensional analysis. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.